Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. You must be expecting something. But I can tell you, you might be expecting, but I think the baby has arrived. Let me tell you about this baby. So few in this generation have been in the presence of the full glory of God. So few, too few. We have been functioning in what is called the anointing of God. But in order to get this world no longer upside down, but right, right way up, we need the glory of God. I believe that on this show, at this moment, you are going to experience the glory of God. Now, now, Kevin Zandai, he's a nice uh, flight attendant for a major airline. He goes to a dentist, has a procedure, dies, goes to heaven. You didn't want to come back. Why? <laughs> because, because everything that you could ever hope for is, in, is there in this presence of Jesus. And you look in his eyes, you don't want to ever leave that place again. You want to stay with him for the rest of your eternity. You told me he sent you back. Why? You didn't want to. I know him. He, his heart was that everyone would be activated to walk in the spirit in these last days, just like Enoch did. And so he asked me to come back and activate people. And he said that he would be with me, that he said it was essentially rigged in my favor and that I can't lose. Now, I've noticed this, but you literally live in two worlds. How, how, how do you function living in heaven and earth at the same time? Well, at times, it's, times it's kind of amusing because it's slower down here. So Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus will show me things that are supposed to happen, and it takes weeks sometimes for people to get it. And so I have to help them along a little bit sometimes. And so I either pray or I start to talk to people and, and get them moving in the right direction. Uh, you had an experience where you were taken back into time and saw Enoch go to heaven and Elijah go to heaven. What did you say? Well, Sid, first of all, I just want to tell the audience that while I tell this story about Enoch and about Elijah and what happened to them, every time I tell this story, the power of God will come through either the television set or in an auditorium when I speak, because this is an example of the power and the glory of God that's going to come upon the earth. Enoch's walk with God and Elijah's ride in his chariot, the power that took them is the same power and glory that is coming upon the earth. So open your hearts right now and receive as I tell this story. When I was on an airplane with my wife going to Seattle, uh, I felt somebody come past me in the aisleway and stop right in front of uh, my seat. So um, knowing that someone was standing there looking at me, I looked up and there was no one there. And then immediately I saw an angel. He grabbed me by the arm and whisked me away. And we went off the airplane. I watched the airplane go behind us. And we went to a, uh, a place on the earth that uh, didn't look familiar to me. And um, there was an open field. And I saw a man walking on a path. And um, the angel said, I have, been, I have been given permission to show you what the powers of the coming age are. He said, it's the resurrection power. And he said, it's the power that caused Enoch to go to heaven without dying. And he said, behold, 
the resurrection power, the power of the coming age, and he pointed at this man, and I watched him take his last step, and the glory surrounded him and enveloped him around, and then all of a sudden, his last step was in the other realm, and he disappeared right before us, our eyes. But Sid, what happened was, is that glory came back and hit the angel and I, and almost knocked us over. And immediately after that, he told me that that was Enoch, and that was his last step. And so then he grabbed me and we went up into the air again and we were flying and I didn't know it, but we were going to another time. And we landed and I saw a chariot pull up. It was on fire and this man got into it. And I saw someone standing beside the chariot as well. And the chariot took off with this man and the same power that I saw around Enoch went around the chariot and the power of God came back and hit us and almost knocked us over again. And the angel told me that that was Elijah. And that was uh, what I came back with. I actually came back with what hit my spirit, came back and imprinted me. You came back with that. Can anyone walk in that resurrection power, glory that's a believer? Yes, before he brought me back to the plane, he handed me a scroll and he said, here's your ministry. And I said, can I keep it and take it back with me? And he said, no, because it's in the Bible. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He said, that's your ministry. You have a ministry of reconciliation. He said, you go and you reconcile people back to God because the price has been paid. Just tell them that. Do you believe, do you believe we are at the beginning stages of the last move of God? Yes, Sid, I do believe that. I believe that right now there's a quickening of the Spirit with that resurrection power. It's the same power that rose Jesus from the dead. It also caused us to become a new man in Christ with the born-again experience. But that same power is also now coming in glory. And when the glory of God comes in, then things begin to correct. And so in the next coming months, the Lord showed me that there is going to be such a correction with, that people are going to have to watch their words. Yeah, you know what I've been uh, feeling? That as this glory increases, if we say something, even in jest, it's going to happen. Correct. And it's almost, it's going to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I feel like there's a, lot of, there's a lot of you out there right now, you're going through a lot, and um, I just want you to know that this time that you've gone through, it's very hard for you, but the Lord wants you to know right now, thus saith the Lord, that your time of coming out is here. Don't wait another day. The Lord says you are going to break out by the resurrection power in Jesus' name. That power of it is there and it's waiting. Um, the Lord said don't wait another day. So I see that in the next months coming that people are going to start to be quickened in the spirit. They're going to be activated. People aren't going to know. They're going to say, who, who was this person? I, I don't know him anymore. It's going to be their friends. They're going to change. They're going to be transformed in the quickening power of God. You know, I, I just feel such oh. a presence of God. I, I'm, I'm going to have mm. you back later, really praying, mm. uh, really moving actually in the spirit. And, uh, and, and when we come back, I'm going to have Dr. Keith Ellis, uh, by faith, demonstrate creative miracles in the glory. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. The world doesn't need another Christian TV network. What the world needs is life-changing programs that have a tangible outpouring of God's presence. And people need to be able to access it whenever they need it, wherever they are. ISN makes it possible to meet you right at your point of need with live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on mobile devices or smart TVs. Or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural and other exclusive programs in our online library. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Whenever, wherever, God is not limited and neither is your access to the supernatural of God. 
Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. My husband began watching your TV program a little over a year ago. I was quite resistant about watching your program, but I began to see a great change in my husband's way of being, speaking, and just a drastic change in him that I never saw while attending our church for over four years. The Lord completely took over, leaving my husband with such hunger and thirst for more. I wanted what he had. So we both made a commitment to watch every episode available. We have purchased all of the resources we can from your ministry. Our relationship with God has supernaturally grown. Your ministry has totally brought change and transformed us and our marriage. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I grew up in an impoverished and abusive home with drugs and alcohol present. But God used your TV program to wash away the pain of my past and give me new hope for my future. I am now free and walking in the supernatural of God every day. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, hi there. It's just, you know, the presence of God is sweet like yes. honey. Uh, Keith, I'm reminded, you were such a reluctant prophet. God literally pinned you to the ground. Yes, Do you remember did. that? Yeah, he did. I, I, uh, the Lord was calling me to speak, you know, and, and preach and prophesy. And I didn't give him my first major prophecy, which was uh, the Lord had came to me. Jesus appeared to me, and my son was in a coma. And he said, go and prophesy to the doctors. And I did that he'd be raised from the dead, and he was to totally healed. Take me to the time God pinned you to the mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, I want to go back there because, I, you know, the Lord was dealing with me after, uh, I, you know, I, I repented. And, you know, I think repentance is so important. When I, I had got, a, got away from God, and then when Justin, my son, went into that coma, and there was no hope, there was, you know, no brain activity, I unplugged right. him. You know, I, I did a lot of repenting. And when I got home, the Lord appeared to me one minute with God. He told me what to do and had to go back and prophesy to the doctors that he would live and not die. Our words, what you were talking about earlier, are going to be very important in this last day. I mean, it's, you, we've got to watch our words, and we're going to have what we say. I mean, that's imp very important to think about. But I was pinned to the floor, and all day long I tried to get up. I couldn't get up. And the Lord said, when are you going to surrender and preach? How would you like to be called like that? <laughs> you know, when you go, when you go surrender, when you go prophesy for me, and I showed you these dreams as you were young, and here you are running from me. You, I said, Lord, I just I repented. Justin got raised up. He said, Yeah, but you haven't surrendered your whole life to win this world to Jesus, which is me. You know, so I said, Okay, Lord, if you'll do five things, tell me one. And by the way. He felt very confident. They were too hard for, for God. <laughs> you, you know, Just tell me one. You know, Sid, always growing up, you, know, you, look at, you look at the ministers up on the platform, and they were educated and all that. So I thought, you know, the first thing came to mind, I have no Bible education. You know, I just went to church. So what I said, well, Lord, I can't preach. Because I have no Bible. I, I gave God five excuses why I couldn't do it. Right. You know, God already knows how to fix it all. So I gave these five excuses. But the number one, I can't preach because I have no Bible education. He said to me, you're going to have some education if you'll surrender to me. So I surrendered to preach. That night I went to church. The pastor couldn't preach. He said, somebody in here has got the message. I gave the message. Revival broke out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both of us had a friend who is currently in heaven. Right. His name was Bob Jones. And he reminded me of you a lot <laughs> because he also, when he had a dream, it was 100% accurate. Uh, but uh, Bob told you there was a point and he was talking about the glory. Tell me what, what he told you about the glory being lifted. You know, Bob had told me, uh, he came to my church a good bit. We were good friends, him, him and his wife, Bonnie, and we just love him. And Bob was such a great man of God. And uh, he came and he, he was talking about this end time revival that's coming. 
where a billion souls would be swept into the kingdom. Just like no church could hold them. They'd be in the fields. They'd be in stadiums with, in, instead of sports events, and there'll be sports events, but the stadiums would be full of people hungry for God. That's what's fixing to happen right now. So, and I asked Bob about, a lot about that during that time, and he said, you know, Keith, he said, uh, years ago, the Lord came to me and told me he was going to take the glory off the earth for a while, but he was going to leave the anointing, and thank God for the anointing. And Bob said, you know, Lord, if you're going to take the glory, I just want to go, and he said, but I'm going to bring it back. And so, you know, Bob had a prophecy about, the, about this time, uh, about 40 years later, and here you are celebrating 40 years, that the glory would begin to return to this earth. So is the 40 years the same celebration I'm having? Is it going to happen, did he say, in this year would be 40 years? Well, many people have told me, and he has, they have a book out called The Shepherd's Rod. Bonnie has it out. And it says in there that it will be 40 years. And it, the way it's going to follow, it's going to follow in the spring of this year. Of what, it's going to begin. So I'm ready. How about y'all? Well, <laughs> you know, Keith, we just have a couple minutes in this segment. And, of course, we'll have you back uh, in, a, in a little later segment. Uh, but there are many people suffering right now. Yes. They're in the wilderness, uh -huh. and they don't even know why. Uh -huh. And you're crying out to God, God, where are you? God, did I commit a horrible sin? God, <laughs> we had such sweet fellowship. What word would you give them? And what I'd like to say is, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. And I want to say that I believe that we're at a mile marker today. Would, would you look at someone in the eye right now and yeah. say that to them? Yeah. You are. Yeah. I want to say right now that those that are watching that, that you, you've been heavy with grief. You've been going through some struggles. You've been confused. You, you've been burdened about a lot of things. You can't see the end of the road. I'm going to tell you, we're at a mile marker today in the Spirit. And a mile marker shows you, you know, where you're at on the road. And I believe that what you're about to see is you're at a mile marker and just around the corner, you're coming out of the wilderness into the promises of God. You're going to have the answers you've been looking for, and you're going to see. God gave me during my time Isaiah uh, chapter uh, uh, 61. I'm 61 years old. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse number 3. And he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to give you beauty for your ashes. I want to say today that God's going to give some people some beauty for the ashes you've had in your life. And, you know, and God gave me a whole thing about Job, you know, because Job was sitting in a ash heap scraping himself. There are people that are right now, it looks like your world has turned to ashes, but God is about to resurrect you. Your best days are ahead of you. Wow. The same Jesus that got up from the dead is about to resurrect your life, and it's going to be the best days. It's going to be heaven on earth for you people that will believe me. Many of you are being delivered right now by the power of Almighty God. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural! I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Oh, there is a river in this studio like we have never had before. And I want you. As a matter of fact, Kevin, you were telling me about Jesus at the pool of Bethesda. I, um, 
I just want to I just want you to picture Jesus coming into the pool and there's all these people that are waiting for that water to be stirred and Jesus himself told me when before I came back uh, that I was supposed to share this story he said the church is waiting for the water to be stirred and they don't discern that the healer is before them and so this man is trying to get Jesus if it happens while he's there to go ahead and to help him into the water because that first person in gets healed and Jesus said that's what that's what people are doing they're waiting for this this thing that's random to happen he said that man didn't even know who I was there he said if he would have asked me I would have laid hands on him and healed him right there on the spot but he said there's no man to put me in but see there was a man that was seated at the right hand of God at one time and came down in a body. And he right there could have healed him. And he did. And the Lord said, we're at this point right now where we're not discerning the day of our visitation. We're waiting for something to happen. And the Lord says, don't wait. Just ask and believe. Amen. Kevin, you told me something that I have felt for a long time, just a few minutes ago, that God told you about something about supernatural languages, about tongues. Jesus himself, in person, I mean, just imagine this, that 23 years ago, in person, he told me that the number one supernatural thing that you could do was to yield to the Spirit and let the Spirit begin to speak out the mysteries of God. He says, and once that happens, guess what? The transaction goes from the heavenly realm into the physical realm. And I have had people who spoke the language that I speak in tongues tell me what I was saying. And for a whole week, this individual translated, not interpreted, translated from his native tongue everything that I was saying. It was naming people that I would meet within 24 hours, and I did. It was, it was every transaction that was gonna happen the next week. He didn't even know. He was just telling me, this is, this, you know, he would name names. I go, well, I know what that, that is. And then I, 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 would, I would come in contact with that person. He, he would tell me things. He said, the Spirit is saying, Kevin, he says, you're, you're going into the supernatural. He said, you're going, and he told me what name the school I was gonna go to. He didn't know that. I was speaking his native language. So what is it that the spirit is wanting to say through you that's going to take it from the spirit realm and bring it here? And I'm telling you, once you utter it, it is a transaction and the devil can't do anything about it. Keith, you told me when you were sitting on the set, the fire of God, the electricity of God went through your body. But you see, I know something about you that few people know. Do you pray in tongues much? <laughs> All the time. I'm just hearing this from the Lord so clearly that the Lord is saying to me that Joshua stood one time at a point in his life where the Lord said, cross this Jordan. Now, Joshua and Caleb had crossed the Jordan before, but he said, cross this Jordan. This Jordan that he was talking about, he was talking about not yesterday's Jordan, not tomorrow's Jordan, but the Jordan that's here right now, it was one mile wide out of the banks, very deep and rushing. And many people standing there, they thought, that's impossible. That's impassable. Nobody could cross that. But when you have a word from God, when you have a word from God, anything is possible. And that's why God's going to do great things here right now. I'll tell you what, let's stand up. Eyes. Right are being healed right now. Migraines are leaving right now. Pain in the fingers, in the wrist. Thank you, Lord. It's gone. It's finished. It is gone. Pains of any kind, they are gone. Because I, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Sikenu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness, I bind the enemy. I hold the blood of Jesus against the enemy. I command those spirits of infirmity to be bound and to leave right now. And I say that healing is flowing like a river. 
The supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. I was afraid of the supernatural until I started watching your TV program and since doing your mentoring study guide and DVD. Now the fear has gone and I do believe I have received an impartation from God. SidRoth.org forward slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. I have a woman that has been known as Pastor John Osteen's wife. I have a woman who has been known as Pastor Joel Osteen's mother. But I found out she operates in a supernatural gift that I want.